Hey, hey, everyone. This is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. There is a buzzword that is thrown out all of the time, self-empowerment. Right, you hear that. And now at a basic level, the term empowerment simply means becoming powerful. So personal empowerment is taking control of your own life, setting goals and making positive choices. Basically, it means that you have to understand your strengths and weaknesses and have the belief in yourself. I like to think of it as finding your superpowers. And of course, I love getting people into their costumes to match. And and most of you know that. But when you are empowered, you are confident. And that confidence gets you the opportunities you want. And you also know your limits. You have no problems with asking for help or guidance. You're really comfortable with where you're at. Now, here's the thing. When you're not empowered, you will tend to feel like you're out of control over what you do and allow others quite often to make decisions for you. So whether it's a date, it could be a partner, children, managers, colleagues, you name it. Inherently, the lack of confidence affects your decisions and therefore you're going to rely on others. And that goes for relying on others for your happiness and fulfillment, which can be exhausting. That's why, for instance that guy who didn't text you back or ask you for another date might completely devastate you. So, you know, this sounds simple, but taking control and feeling that power can be complicated and it's, it's different for everyone. You know, it's funny when you think about it, we can either be our own superhero flying through life with our cape on no matter what life challenges brings us, or we can be our own worst enemy that lets everything get in the way of our successes. I love this quote from Eleanor Roosevelt. She said so beautifully, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. That's so true. And, you know, no matter what these patterns of behavior can be, they can be changed. They can be changed by increasing your self-awareness, your self-confidence, and shift your perception, not just in other people, but in yourself. This is an amazing story I just have to share around this empowerment piece. I'm working with a woman. um, You know, originally she came to me because uh, she just had a string of these toxic relationships. And I, I really wanted to help her find the superheroine within. Her powers were completely knocked down at an early age. She was living in a very abusive and neglectful environment. And because of this, she in the past would pick men who did not treat her well and would constantly give all her power away to them. So we were working together to get her power back slowly and building her confidence. And I was slowly starting to see her Supergirl costume coming together. And although she had her cape on, she, she really was still fearful of flying. But something remarkable happened recently that allowed her to soar. She had this toxic relationship that was going on at work with a client. And yet again, she found herself just feeling powerless and it was really leaking into her dating. Like it was causing her to not date. And during a coaching session, she had this huge breakthrough after realizing that this toxic relationship was keeping her stuck. I said to her, I said, you got to get rid of this guy and this toxic situation because it is weighing you down. It is preventing you from finding love. You are consumed with it. And at first she was just kind of fighting and saying, I I can't, there's no way I can let go of this client. This is my livelihood. I just got to hang on for a little bit. And with every objection she had, I had a solution for her. And so it got to the point where she, she couldn't, she ran out of excuses and she said, you know what? You're right. She figured out a solution. The next day 
I told her, I don't want to have another coaching call with you until you get rid of this problem. <laughs> I mean, I had to kind of play hardball on her because I know that she was feeling powerless and I wanted to empower her. And she finally saw a solution. And so she did it. The next day, she went to the people that she figured out who could help her. And not only did they help her, but was so supportive of her and ended up in a better situation than she even was in before this all happened. And she just, you know, she felt so relieved. It was like a weight was lifted off of her. And the other thing is she couldn't believe how long she had gone without doing anything, without you know, really gaining that power. And that night, guess what? A flood of guys just happened to be in her inbox and her dating site. And she got really excited to start dating again because she finally had that positive energy. You know, when one door closes, another one will open. You all have the power to create the life you want. You just have to have that self-awareness and of course, some tools along the way. And that's why I'm bringing on this amazing guest. You are going to love him as I do. And he knows a thing or two about empowering people to live a fantastic life. And when you hear his story, honestly, you all have no excuses at this point. He has been through so much and just really an inspiring person. He's been acknowledged as one of the leading cosmetic dermatologists in the world for three decades, a pioneer in cosmetic surgery, transformational speaker, author, celebrity, and mentor. He's written 17 books, um, a lot of which were around cosmetic surgery today. Um, And he also right now is, he just launched a really powerful book. We're going to talk about it today. Um, He has won prestigious consumer choice award for cosmetic surgery for 16 consecutive years. And as he was going through his journey, and I want him to talk about this as well, in 2003, his life changed drastically when he suddenly developed a right foot drop and then misdiagnosed as ALS. But still, he maintained his status as leading cosmetic doctor for 30 years. The new book that he is launching right now. It's called The Secrets of Living a Fantastic Life with Harriet Tinka. She's a former fashion model and woman of distinction. He's also currently co-authoring two more books with my friend Corey Poirier with The Blue Talks Presents, Business Life and Universe, and one with the famous Jack Canfield. Entire, uh, it's entitled The Pillars of Success. Oh my gosh. Welcome, Dr. Alan Like, Are you there? Kimmy, yes, I am. And wow, after that introduction, I don't know if you're talking about me or somebody else. <laughs> That's all, all you, baby. Eulogy. I didn't write that. Now, it's almost a eulogy you're putting out there. Well, the rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated. And I'm ready to talk to your, your guests and listeners about something that they need to know. And that's about empowerment. Empowerment is a tough thing, and it's a it's a big word, and people slip over that word, and they they have hard problems with it because it almost sounds like akin to vanity. That it almost sounds the wrong way for a person to go. But you know, empowerment is really about confidence. And there was a quote by Mary Jo Martin was that confidence and empowerment are cousins, in my opinion. Oh. Empowerment comes from within. And typically is fostered by self-assurance. To feel empowered is to feel free. And that's when people do their best. You can't fake confidence or empowerment. Now, now to me, that really summarizes it in a nutshell. But at the other end of the spectrum, Kimmy, is this terrible thing called fear. Mm -hmm. And fear is what really keeps people in their place and keeps people away from empowerment. And, and, you know, the process of, of spotting fear and refusing to obey it is really the source of true empowerment. That was said by Martha Beck. Mm-hmm. And, in, you know, the word fear is a really important word, Kimmy. It, it, it really stands for false expectations appearing real. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's what fear is all about. And why? Well, you know, 95% of what you're afraid of aren't going to happen. It's just not. 
Right. So, so here's this shadow that you're afraid of, and it's a demon, and it's scaring the hell out of you because this, this, all your insecurities, all these other things come out when you're getting into that in a situation that makes you afraid, and and then you start reverting back to the time that you were a little girl, and that situation when you were embarrassed or shamed is something that you start thinking in your mind is going to come over again. That's going to happen again. And and that's what's so wrong here. And, and let me tell you yeah. how I conquered fear, Kimmy, because I think that'll help a lot. Of I was just going to ask you, you took the words right out of <laughs> ah, it. <laughs> see, see, we're on the same page so much. We're like twins from a different mother sort of thing. <laughs> and, and we, talk, we talk different languages and we talk about the same different yeah. topics, but we're really talking the same thing a lot. And it's yeah. so Interesting. I met you at a Cory Pori Blue Talk in Mississauga, and yeah. you know, it was like I knew you forever for some reason. And it, since oh, that yeah. time, we've kept up our friendship, and it's been amazing. I know, I know. Well, and I was so touched with your story, and 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 that's why I was excited for you to come on because, you know, it, there are. I can't tell you how many times I'll get on with a prospective client or just people who are struggling. And, you know, we all have these scarlet letters, I call them, you know, things that we think are so bad or, or makes us unlovable, or we can't possibly, you know, go on or find the person for us. And, and, you know, you have such a remarkable story and I would love for you to share that because I, okay. I do think I it's could take you back in time, Kimmy, to 2000. I was at that time, I was one of the top cosmetic doctors in the world. I had a boomer year. I mean, we had just, uh, we, we started Botox, we started fillers, we started doing tumescent liposuction. And I was one mm. of the leading people in doing that. And so I decided to take a vacation with my wife and my youngest daughter to Disneyland, which of course is the happiest place on earth. People ask, where are you going? Well, Disneyland, after you win the, the Super Bowl or anything like that. Well, I was going to Disneyland. And I was walking in Disneyland with my wife and my youngest daughter. It was the end of a hot, sticky day. It was over 100 degrees. And my wife turned to me and said, what's wrong with you, hon? Mm. And, you know, for once in my life, Kimmy, I hadn't said anything wrong. I hadn't done anything wrong. For I hadn't even thunk anything wrong. You know, so what the heck was this lady getting at here? I, so I said, what do you mean? She said, listen to your foot. I said, what do you mean, listen to my foot? That's the stupidest thing you've said in a long time. She said, no, listen to it. And so I listened to my foot like I was told. And my wife, I, and my foot had actually suddenly and mysteriously developed a right foot drop. You know, your brain is designed that when you're walking, your right foot lifts up like it was supposed to. Well, my foot was not lifting up. It was slapping on the pavement with each step I was taking. So my wife, out of concern, of course, said, what's wrong with you? It wasn't a, a degradatory remark or anything like that. It was just, what's wrong with you? I need to know. And so I said, I haven't got the faintest idea, dear. And she said, well, when you get back to Canada, you better get this checked out. Now, when your wife tells you to get something checked out in that tone of voice, what do you do, Kimmy? Well, you do it. I of mean, course. it's your wife, for God's sakes. Yeah. And she's saying it not out of maliciousness or to hurt you. She yeah. wants you to get better. So when I got back, I went to see probably hundreds of doctors and I had every test known. I had cat scans. I had brain scans. I had scan scans. You know, you know what they showed at the end of the day, Kibby? What? absolutely nothing. nothing. Wait, Everything. I have a wait question before you move on. So sure. during that time, I mean, I imagine, cause you talked about fear before, I, were you scared? And, and like, how, how were you, you know, moving it, it on? Was, it was bizarre because, you know, not only was my right leg involved, then my right arm became to be involved and I wasn't able to do the things that I could do. Uh. My right arm, I'm right-handed or mm -hmm. I was right-handed. But, you know, I'm a very talented doctor, so I became left-handed. Mm 
and I became a left-handed doctor. And, wow. you know, back then they didn't even have tools for left-handed doctors. I had to invent them. I invented left-handed scissors to use. I invented left-handed scalpels to use. You know, really? everything was geared towards the right-handed world. In fact, doctors didn't think left-handed people should be doing surgery because they felt that it was evil. Uh, oh my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so I became one of the first left-handed doctors, but I kept looking. I mean, you know what happens when a doctor can't find an answer? They do more tests. Mm. So I had tests and tests and tests. I think I had tests that people didn't even invent yet. And I think they're still, a, you know, they did just did tests for testing. And I ended up on the doorstep of a world-leading neurologist. And he was supposed to have all the answers. These are the brain guys, Kimmy. They're the guys that have every answer. He's the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. So I walk in and he said, hi, Dr. Like." I said, hi. He said, you better be sitting down when I tell you this. I said, why? I got a drop right foot. He said, no, you don't. You have ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Get your affairs in order. In six months, you're going to be dead. (sighs) Wow. What a tongue of bricks he hit me with there, Kimmy. So I asked him, is there a way to prove this diagnosis? He looked at me and looked me up and down and said, of course, on autopsy. Oh, my gosh. What a how do you do that was. Well, I immediately met that with, I'm not going to die to prove you wrong. (laughs) Okay, wait, this is really important because I feel like this is the the peak of the story and the and it's when we all are faced with something that we have decisions to make and how you know we're going to handle it like it, you know you know my story with my red dress and yes. you know i was actually i was going down a bad path i i was going back to bed i i wasn't going towards movement how did you decide to have that kind of fight about you. To- you know, I, I think I've always been a feisty guy. You know, I'm a Canadian. We live by hockey. We live by fighting. You know, yeah, there's the old joke about I went to a hockey game and a, I went to a fight and a hockey game broke out because that's what <laughs> Canadians have in them. Okay, under- but, but people can't all be Canadians. Calm deme- demeanor, there's fight and fury. We have to tame the elements up here. We're in the frontier, you know. Yeah. We have to go out and... Uh, you know, I was a cowboy when I was, uh, my biggest thing I wanted to be when I was a kid was a cowboy, you know, riding the fucking <laughs> Bronx. I grew up in Calgary, the head of the Calgary Stampede, you know, you ride the bucking Bronx, you ride the wild bulls, you, you go forward, you don't, you don't put up with bullshit. You just okay, so, but it. here's the question, for those of us who are not Canadian, how can we get that? <laughs> you let know, me, like, let what? Me, let me tell you how to develop it, okay? So, you know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross says that when something hits you, you go through a grief reaction. Yeah, yeah, and she yeah. She wrote the book on death and dying. Right. And during that reaction, you do f- four or five things. One is you go through a phase of anger. Well, I was angry at this guy. I was pissed off at him. I wasn't going to let him tell me what was going on. He was wrong, and I knew it. Uh, then you go through bargaining, Kimmy. You say, yep. oh, God, please don't let this happen. I will do anything if you won't let this happen, okay? Then you go through uh, other phases such as you go through denial. I know there's nothing wrong. I can do everything. Mm. Uh, the, you know, there's really nothing wrong. But, you know, you there is something wrong. You've got to drop right foot. Your right hand isn't working right. There's something wrong. But then comes that evil phase that you went through as well, which is depression, where you yeah. everything is black. You wear black. The sky is black. Yep. You're not going to get out of bed. You're not going to. You're not eating. You're not sleeping. Everything is evil. The black monsters are around you, and they're just taking over your soul. Depression is probably the worst. And and by the way, that's when you feel the least amount of power the least amount of control over the matter too. I mean, I think this is the whole like empowerment piece as well. Cause when you're in that state of depression, it's hard to see past it. Well, and that's where you get to the, you know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's last phase is acceptance. Yeah. 
Well, I wasn't going to accept because I knew mm. one thing, Kimmy, and that doctors make mistakes. I, I don't want to share that too often because yeah. doctors don't make many mistakes, but they do make mistakes. And doctors have egos the size of Montreal quite often because they have to. I mean, they have to go and help their patients every day, yeah. every every hour of every day. So quite often they put things in pigeonholes. They put them in the way that they understand them. And then they move on to the next thing. But doctors do make mistakes. And so when they make a mistake, they don't often admit it. But you know, back in 2003, something new was invented. And you probably haven't heard of it. It's something called the internet. Oh, I've, I've, I've heard of something like that. Yeah, well, that's because <laughs> Bob Gore invented it about, 2000, about 1999. And, and, you know, Al Gore, rather. Al Gore invented it. And he, he really made it something special. Yeah. At least that's the rumor that goes on. <laughs> I, I really don't know who invented the internet, but it was invented back then. And it was primitive back in 2003. You had to get on with dial-on connections. Do, do, do. You got it for about Remember a half that? hour. Your phone would do that with some other phone. And yeah. finally... Finally, they connect. And then when you got on, you had to speak to it in a primitive language like mm. DOS and because you, you had to look up every individual website. There were no search engines back then. There was nothing. And so you had to look for what you wanted to find. Thank goodness I had friends that were nerds because they helped me find things. And I found a doctor in Colorado Springs, Colorado, by the name of David Martz. And David had exactly the same thing happen to him that happened to me. He, but he was, got worse much more rapidly, and he was on his deathbed. Now, David was a very well-known doctor. People knew him from around the world, so they came, came to him to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. And a doctor from Texas came up and looked at him and said, David, I don't think you have ALS. I don't think you have Lou Gehrig's disease. What I think you have is something different. And David said, what do I have? He could only whisper at that time. The doctor said, I think you've been bitten by a tick. I think you have something called chronic Lyme's disease. And I think this is a great mimicker, he said. He, wow. It mimics everything. So if I'm right, though, he said, I can start you on treatment and I can make you better. David said, well, what do I have to lose? I'm dying. So he started him on treatment. And like Lazarus, within one week, he was back to normal. He was doing all the things he could. So this is the start, the the crux of the story, Kimmy. Mm -hmm. I knew this doctor had answers that I did not have. I knew he had a solution because it helped him. And I got in touch with him. And I got on a plane from Edmonton to Colorado Springs. I had to go through Denver. And it was the flight from hell because... At the end of the day, when you fly from Denver to Colorado Springs, the air makes eddies and it causes the plane to drop over and over and over uh, again. Yeah. Have you ever been on the drop of doom at Disneyland? Um, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> well, think about doing that 20 times a oh my god! because that's what the plane does. It climbs and drops and climbs and drops, and climbs and drops. So everybody who gets off that plane gets off green. And I was green. And I crawled off the plane. And lo and behold, there was David to meet me. And he was right on the tarmac. This was 2003. We didn't have all the the security precautions in place that we do now. He was there. He drove his truck right onto the runway. He was meeting the doctor. He was a well-known doctor in the town. They knew he wasn't a terrorist, so he could do anything he wanted. So he took me and we talked for hours and he said these magic words, Gibby, history repeats itself. History is, mm-hmm. is really going over again. I can make you better. And he did. I was able to maintain my status. Top cosmetic doctors for over 30. But you know, when you go through this, Gibby, your life changes. You realize yeah. things in life that used to bother you don't bother you anymore. You realize that you've lived when others would have died, and you start to give back. You realize that you've been given a second chance, and that second chance is what you're going to give others. You're going to share your knowledge and help them become better. So if anything, I want people to remember the following words. It's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens. 
Uh, I like you to remember these fantastic, magical words that are blazing. Now, I did not invent these words. Uh, these were invented by a guy by the name of Epitetes, who was a Greek at around 0 AD. And he was a slave that became a free man. And he realized that it was not what you do, it's what you do with what happens. And this is the key for everybody when they're in that situation where they can't move forward. Because in any given situation, there's a response that is the optimal response for what you should do. And it's almost and it's usually the exact opposite of what you think it should be. It's the exact opposite of what you know is happening. So, Kimmy, when you put on your red dress and decided, this person influenced you to put on a red dress, and you decided to take on an image that was totally 180 degrees from where you were, that's what you did. You adopted a whole different attitude by something you did. You took a little baby step forward, but it had a formative step on the rest of your whole mentality. It really changed everything in such a way that you really became a different person from what you were projecting to the world. It's, I, I love everything you just said. And it's so inspiring, even as you're saying it through your story, because I mean, here's the thing, and I just wonder what you would say, because a lot of people listening are single, and they're trying to empower themselves with, with their love life and, and have that fantastic life that you have with your wife. And what are some actionable steps that well, people you know, can I'm take? Tell everybody, and, and this is not self-serving, but yeah. it's something that I'd love everybody to do, and that's to pick up a copy of my book, The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life. Because mm -hmm. in that book, there are 13 golden pearls. Each mm. one of them can empower a person and take them to the next level. Each one of them is a very magical thing that really helps a person get to the next level. And these little golden pearls are so empowering. They gave you a necklace of empowerment to take on the world. So even if you concentrate on just one of them, it'll make your world a better place. And let's start with one, Kimmy. Yeah, so, but you're teasing us. I'm like, do share I'll, at least I, one I, I'll share two of them. One is <laughs> a gratitude, okay? Yeah. You know, Kimmy, there are so many things to be grateful for in this world. And today I looked at my schedule and I saw Kimmy was on my schedule. And mm -hmm. I said, oh my goodness, this is going to be a magic day. Because every time we get together, we make magic and we really, we really hit it off. And it's really a high point of my day. I think it probably is in yours too. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Gratitude is so important. Cause I also think that a lot of times, especially when you're in that state of depression or disempowerment, that you focus on the things that are not going well versus the things that are so that, that by focusing well, so on that positive, you, you know, how you harness it, Kimmy, you take a journal and or mm -hmm. on a computer or your iPhone and write th three things down that you're grateful for today. Okay. Simple, easy things. And I will guarantee that every day you do this, you'll bring up other things in your life you're grateful for. And every day you're going to realize that yep. you're really having a great life, not an awful life like you think you are. And every day you're going to realize that there's something you can do. And I'm going to put a challenge on all your people out there. I want them to do something for somebody else today that they mm -hmm. wouldn't regularly do. I want them to pay it forward. Uh, you know, up in Canada here, we have a Tim Hortons coffee shop. And quite often when I go to buy my coffee, they say, sir, this is no price. And I said, why? And they say, the person in front of you bought your coffee today, sir. <sighs> Now, can you picture paying that forward? So, of course, what I do is I buy the coffee for the person next in line for me so that mm -hmm. they will have a fantastic day, too. So can you picture how that little gesture has changed so many people's lives and changed that frown to a big smile on their day? You know, half a lot of people in the United States don't have enough food to eat right now because of the COVID epidemic. 
Mm-hmm. You know, they do, they only make enough money every day to fill their groceries. So what you can do is give a donation to the food bank so they're not hungry. You can go and help your next door neighbor with a task. You can go help your neighbor with something that you wouldn't regularly. Maybe you have a car and you can go and do a little deed for them that you wouldn't do. Pay it forward. Do that today is what I'm going to tell everybody to do. And and can I just highlight how people can use this in their dating life too? I mean, can you imagine instead of, you know, going on a date and, and feeling, oh God, I can't believe I'm here. This person isn't for me, you know, and focusing on the things that just aren't working. What if you looked at it completely different? What if you went in to the date and said, what am I going to learn from this person today? I'm so grateful that I'm able to go on this date today. And is there a like a little pearl that I can get from that person? Maybe it's not romantic. Maybe it's something different. And then what if you actually paid it forward by introducing your friend to that person because they weren't the right person for you. So, you know, those actionables are so important. And also we know this, but just to highlight it for you listening is that that disempowerment that you feel is a lack of control. And by doing these things are putting yourself in the driver's seat to be in control of your fantastic life, in your love life, all of those things. And there's shifts that go on in the brain that actually move towards that. So I I love these little pearls. Well, here's another one for you. You know, Mother Teresa once says, if you love until it hurts, there's no hurt, there's only love. Can you picture that as being important? Yeah. And, and yeah. fear is actually not about being unafraid. I, I mean, you're going to be mm-hmm. afraid, but it's being afraid and taking action anyhow. Yes. You know, that, yeah. that's really what fear does. It should empower you to take a step forward. And, and you really should take a little baby step. And, you know, courage is what it, what it takes to stand up and speak. And courage is also what it takes to sit down and run away. That was from Winston Churchill. You know, courage is really a great thing. You know, you know, it, it really is so terrible to be afraid because it's a bit like dancing. Yeah. You're enveloped by the music, so you dance to it. But to conquer fear, you really have to surrender to it. You have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. Which, which is not always a comfortable place to be. But, you know, vulnerability is where everything beautiful happens. Yeah. Vulnerability is really, you can't love unless you're vulnerable. Because otherwise, it's just a superficial relationship. You have to allow yourself to be hurt. Otherwise, you're never going to be really truly in love. And you'll never find the person to love. But, you know, yes, you might get hurt in a love relationship. But, you yeah. know, there's also the other side. You might not be, and you might find the perfect person in your life that your mirror image, that your person that you really can resound on. Now, I, I tell you, I've been married for 39 years now. Oof. And I'll tell you, we are not always on the same page, my wife and I. Oh, you're but not? We, you're not perfect? It's not, not always perfect. the happiest place but on earth. Well, <laughs> we compliment each other. We yeah. compliment each other in so many different ways that it really is amazing. She has strengths in certain areas and I have strengths in other areas. Mm. And really that's what it's all about. And the big thing that ties it all together is communication and being able to discuss those things Mm -hmm. without being hurt by them and to discuss the things that really move things forward. And if you do get hurt from them, to move from that into a position where you're not hurt by it. You know, it, that's what it's all about. And at the heart of all this, Kitty, is forgiveness. Forgiveness oh, yeah. is one of the greatest things that we have. Forgiveness is one of the greatest pearls on my list. Because mm-hmm. from because of forgiveness, we're able to do so many things. You know, forgiveness is not always easy. At times, it feels more painful than the wound we suffered. It, you know, it really is difficult. But there can be no forgiveness without, no peace without forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's from Marianne Williamson. And it really is a strong quote about what we really need to do. 
We really need to be able to forgive and forgive with all our heart because forgiveness isn't necessarily for the other person. It's for you. Mm -hmm. It's for you to move forward. You know, if you're full of, when a snake bites you, Kimmy, it's not the snake that kills you. It's the venom that goes throughout your body that kills you. So this is the antidote for the venom is is the forgiveness that you give. Uh It really is for you. It's not for the other person. That's a great metaphor. And I, you know, I'm sure everyone's really intrigued now what the other pearls are, but I think we should use this as foreshadowing so that people will get motivated to buy your book so they can learn about the other pearls. There's so many. Also to to go forward with that. And I'm also going to give all your audience a little present today, Kimmy, and I'd like to give them 52 golden pearls without even buying my book. Because oh, awesome. What we do is we get your audience to just text me mm-hmm. the word golden pearls. Text it to the following number. You can put it in your in your podcast notes. It's 1-819-717-2515. That's 1-819-717-2515. Just text me golden pearls. And I will give them a golden pearl a week for the next 52 weeks. And that will help to change their week and their life and really make it a, a different thing. But if they'd like to buy my book, I'd mm-hmm. like them to do that at fantasticlife.com. At fantasticlifebook.com. Uh, it's a little site we set up that's www.fantasticlifebook.com. Because then I know who's buying it from where. And that way I can give 20% of the cost of the book to uh, a charity in your area that helps to take away and helps get rid of domestic violence. Uh, those are the women's shelters in the area because my co-author was greatly affected by domestic violence. She mm-hmm. was kidnapped, stabbed, and left for dead. And this okay. is our way to try and stop something like this from happening and something like this that we can do to make a little change in the world. So 20% of the profits of our book will go to help a shelter in your area to and, and hopefully end domestic violence at its roots. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for the gifts and all the work that you're doing. And this is great. You guys definitely text just to start getting those golden nuggets because that is putting yourself into action. And again, it's a snowball effect. You know, once you start making movement in your life, you will see the ripple effect it'll have. So, oh my gosh, Dr. Yeah, Allen, thank you. Yeah. If they'd like to get in touch with me, my website mm-hmm. is D- Dr. Allen Leica. That's mm-hmm. D-R-A-L-L-E-N. Leica is a bit hard to spell, so I'll spell it. dot com. That's D-R Allen, A-L-L-E-N, Leica, L-Y-C-K-A.com. And check us out there. You can write to us from there. You can get some information on the rest of us. Check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on a lot of different sites. So you could all check that out and follow us. Please follow us because right in the fall, we're going to be starting some seminars to help these golden pearls get into your life. These seminars are going to be run virtually so that you could really uh, take advantage of them without even leaving your home. And we're going to make a big impact and help you with your regular life and help you get that self-confidence and self-esteem back up where it could be. Make you empowered. Can I get like a real pearl necklace with that by any chance? <laughs> we don't offer real pearl necklaces. But Darn. I thought maybe we could work with those, that. Those <laughs> beautiful pearl necklaces. I wish I could afford them. The a golden pearl actually exists, Kimmy, but they only exist in the southern Philippines and Indonesian areas. And a single solitary pearl uh, that's a golden pearl is only made by a particular oyster and it costs mm-hmm. upwards of $10,000. Oh my God. But if I know anyone who would actually find it would be you. So again, the pearls that I'm giving, the pearls that I'm giving that are pearls of wisdom are even more invaluable. Yeah. Even more invaluable. They really make a person so much better. In fact, all you have to take is one of those pearls and you will be infinitely better in your lifetime. And that will be more powerful than any simple physical pearl. And it'll be an amazing thing for you. Yeah. Uh, Well, thank you. This was so 
fun having you on. And again, thank you for everything. You know, Kimmy, it truly is my pleasure. If I can be any, any help to anybody in your audience, please let them contact me. I love to help to the best of my ability. Awesome. We'll definitely make sure we'll get your contact in the show notes. So again, thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I am your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. Remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. Definitely pick up Dr. Allen's book and pearls and all that. And if you keep asking yourself why you are still single and feeling powerless about your love life, I have two actionables that you can do right now. First, join my free Facebook group so that you can get motivated and inspired by other single women working on their love life. Number two, grab my exclusive audio course, This May Be Why You Suck at Dating, where I will help you learn to get out of your head and into his bed. And this course is filled with so many juicy things. It's an audio course, which you'll love because it's just like the podcast. You can listen and access it right here. You'll get all the recordings, my exclusive workbooks, guides, and a whole lot more. And if you've ever thought, I wish I knew what I was doing wrong after failed dating experiences, then empower yourself to get the answers here and know what to do about it. Stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to look and feel fabulous every day. Every day.